Welcome back to Go on the Run, and today we're going to be looking at grouping routes in Go Fiber. So, if you go to the Go Fiber website and you click on Docs, then you click on Grouping, you see basically an example of what is going on. So, you can create a group called API, and then you can group a number of routes under it, right? And so, for example, you can have API, then you could create another subgroup called V1 on the API, and so on. And so we'll see a little bit of example of essentially the same thing. So another way of seeing this, um, I think that might make it a little bit easier to understand is with some examples um, in my table. So let's say I have a road call slash about us. Um, and so it would get called, the handler for that would get called every time somebody tried to invoke, let's say slash about us for slash index.html. So that would bring up the, the, that page. Um, I can have a handler for simply slash, and maybe if somebody tried to access that route, maybe they would access slash index at HTML and the handler would get called there. And so those two routes, the slash about us and the slash, those routes are in my slash group. I might also have a group called slash auth on the which I'm going to group routes slash sign up, slash sign in, slash sign out. Notice that the routes, even though I'm calling it slash sign up, slash sign in, slash sign out, the full path to invoke the route is actually slash auth, slash sign up, slash auth, slash sign in, slash auth, slash sign out. That's because these routes, these three routes were, were it within the group slash auth. So the group um, that is in act like it's parent. And some other example would be, let's say I had another group cost slash API, I can then have a middleware for that um, group. And we'll see a little bit why you need to use a middleware if you're going to put any handler at all. Or I can have like slash V1 as another group. And under V1, I could have like items. It's really good practice to put to version your endpoints because if you ever need to change something or introduce something that's incompatible, you can just create another version. And so you can say version two is incompatible with version one or whatever, right? Or if you need to do different type of authentication or something. So it's good to always have version APIs. And so this is how you can have version APIs by having different groups. You can ignore the whole secure or not over there. Um, but hopefully the key takeaway here is that you can group, have these groups and within groups, you have a number of routes. Okay, let's continue by going to the command line. So here in my command line, I'm going to copy um, exercise eight and then change to the exercise one directory and start running our example. So I'm going to start with our main application here. And so first example will be to create an API group. And so we can simply do that as API colon equal app that group. And you can see here for a group, we can put a prefix string and a number of handlers. But our first one, we're not going to put handlers just yet. So we're just going to put, and there they have an example, and we can do slash API. So now we have an API group. Now, how can we use this? Well, once we have an API group, we can put all these endpoints or these routes in our API group. And that's all there is to it. You create a group, and then you use it the same way that you would um, use the app, which is to add um, different end routes with their associated methods and path, right? And so now if we look back here, we'll see that all of our endpoints now is under, our routes are now on the API group. So we can go a little bit further. So for this example, I'm just going to reduce the number of endpoints, that, the routes that we have, just to keep things a little bit simple. And I'm going to say that oh, I have another group called version one, colon equals, and um, I want to create it under APIs. Okay, so that's all what I'll do. And then I'll change this to just say V1. And there you go. If we wait until our code is saved and compiled, we'll see that we have our endpoints now are under slash API slash version one, da da da. And then in the future, if we ever wanted to create a version two of our API, we can easily create that by just doing 
this v2 and so off of our api group we create another group called v2 and now we add some endpoint there and now we can introduce some new endpoints that are not in version one or if we need to change how it works of course these can have different handlers it doesn't have to go to the same end so it goes to show how flexible using groups are and there you go you can see we have different things and we can call these so we can say HTTPIE. of course this endpoint doesn't exist as this we can say api and then we could say version v2 and notice that that works now what happened if we were to call just like let's say v2 just like that of course we don't have a handler there or like this we still don't have a handler or even this right we don't have a handler so we saw that when we were setting this up we can optionally add handlers to our group so what would that look like well before i do that let's go over here and what i'm going to do is create some middleware so i'm going to say middleware um, we have to do see that next if it's a middleware we know we have to do see that next otherwise it terminates the call so what might we want to do in this middleware maybe we want to do some login something like that and so while we're here why don't we just create um two hello middlewares so for example so we have some middleware here so now let's go back here and we're going to use our middleware so here we want to insert the middleware that api and for this guy we're going to insert middleware that api version one and this guy middleware api version two all right and all they do is some login right so nothing terribly interesting and so if we go back here and now we do a call to our api notice that we're getting that log message which is expected we, we put a middleware there but notice since we didn't actually return a um, value to the client because we say move on to the next handler and there wasn't a next handler and there can't be a next handler right before i show you that let's just go back to doing this and so notice that this works we get our api call and we get um v2 call from our middleware and then at the end we get the handler so let me just make sure that you see that that's what's happening so let's clean our clear our screen and i do this i should see three force api then v2 then our handler at the end okay so what happens if we put the actual handler instead of using a middleware so for that i'm going to do this instead i'm going to go to our middleware and instead of this returning so it's going to log and instead of doing see that next it's going to do see that send string and so we'll send the string and so if we go back here you know what's going to happen if we do this and we now try to invoke this what do we get hello from api and that's because api is called first and we do the return we covered this previously about middleware so since we return we never continue propagating the calls for the next middleware and then for the handler so of course once we don't if we do a return we're saying that oh it should not propagate the call so this should be clear that oh yes if we or we don't actually use a middleware as the handler but instead use a handler that returns the final value then it's not going to work as we intended so this is why this needs to be a middleware or a handler that operates as a middleware which means that it's called the next handler in line okay so hopefully that was a very quick example of how to use grouping and why you might want to use grouping no i didn't show you anything about security but you can imagine that this middleware for example would ensure that each request has a authenticated header or whatever however you do in security and so before you can even pass that to version one or two it would um, return an error if it doesn't have that and then you can have other groups that are not authenticated right so it makes it very easy for you to do common things on a group of endpoints or a group of paths so hopefully that gives you some ideas so that's it for this video but before i go i want to thank our patreon supporter mikhail i'm gonna make sure i say thanks to all our patreon supporter in every video 
if you want to see a name on the list um consider being a patreon supporter go to the link below and contribute whatever you can if you or anyone you know is going to be buying tesla product or even just want to do a demo please consider using my tefra referral link um i'll get some points and you can get some discount if you decide to buy something please take a few seconds to hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed if you're liking the series please give a thumbs up on the videos leave some comments i really appreciate it thank you so much thank you for those who have already subscribed and are returning and if this is your first time welcome and thank you for taking the time to subscribe be safe see you in the next video bye